I'm Jeff Alpin, The Big Game Hunter, and this is episode 2428 of the number one podcast in Apple Podcasts for Job Search. This is No BS Job Search Advice Radio, and welcome. And today's show is about 10 ways to know you should reject the offer. There are a million more, but these are 10 easy to spot ways you should do it. Hope you find this helpful. If you're having a decision and you're not sure, this will help. And with that, let's get going. Here are some ways that are easy to spot to let you know you should turn down a job offer. Now, I want to be, make it simple for you. And obviously, you should turn down an offer if the money's too low, the work sucks, and the company's business is in the toilet. Let's put those aside for a second. I'm going to give you 10 more. Number one, and I think this is really the important one. The only good thing about the job is the money. Everything else, not really interesting or exciting or doesn't give you that that feeling that you should do it. Number two, you have questions and they won't answer them or they seem annoyed that you are asking them. They're dating, (laughs) and that's the way it is on interviews. It's a dating situation. Each of you is trying to impress the other. And if they're going to respond by saying, and we talked about that two weeks ago, or they otherwise seem annoyed, or they won't answer at all, your BS detector should go off. Number three, there's something incongruent between what was discussed in the interviews, for example, hours or travel, and what the offer letter says. Always read the offer letter just to make sure. Like, for example, in the interviews, they talk about a nine-to-five job, but in the offer letter, they talk about something a lot more extreme. Or in the interviews, they talk about 10% travel, and in the offer letter, it talks about up to 75. There's a message in that. Next one, number four, the firm has a bad reputation, which can be for their business or how they treat employees. Does it matter? It's going to affect you. And there's a message that they have a bad reputation. It's not because two people complained about something. It's because 200,000 or 2,000 people complain about their experience of this firm or what it's like to be an employee. Number five, the job responsibilities seem vague, as explained. You know, they use catchy terms like, you know, we're going to give you work, um, you know, we're going to expect you to do work. um, I forget the language to use, but you're just not sure about the responsibilities and then, you know, tie that in with, and then they don't want to explain or get clarity about it. Number six, getting benefits is going to take a long time. Now, you can pay for benefits, like you can go to the Affordable Care Act or or healthcare.gov and get benefits, but you're going to pay for that probably. So, you know, when they talk about, oh, we'll get you onto benefits in six months, huh? (laughs) And you're not used to that? There's a message in that. Next, the commute is going to be hellish. Now, I had one of those commutes at one point. I did it voluntarily. uh, And it was a long commute, like two hours each way. I knew what I was getting into. I did it for a long time. But I also had one of those kinds of careers at that point where I could set my own hours. And thus, you know, I I did work on uh, on my commute. Like I I did have, you know, Wi-Fi to work with. But you know, if you're not used to this, it's going to be like hell. Next thing, number eight, they act disrespectfully uh, towards you. They cancel interviews. They're constantly late for appointments. They ghost you for long periods of time and only respond to messages, you know, whether text or email after multiple, you know, little nudges. The interviewers seem rude to you. Remember, this is like dating. You always want to feel like someone's interested in you and they're not treating you like a slab of meat, right? Number nine, there's no upside to the job. You're going to do the same work 
in the same way forever. And who wants to do that? When you ask about you know, career opportunities, like where can I go from here? What's the upside in this role? And they don't have an answer for you? There's a message in that. And last, your gut tells you something. Now, I'm a believer in the BS detector. You know, you know, I smell BS here. And, you know, you may not have words for it, but when all is said and done, there's just a feeling that you have that tells you not to do it. You don't have to quantify it. You just know at a deep level this isn't right for you. Pay attention to those feelings, because I know for so many people, myself included, that those feelings are signaling something to me that I should pay attention to. I'm Jeff Alpin. I hope you found this helpful. Visit my website, TheBigGameHunter.us. Go to the site, go exploring. I'm going to point out that this is something that you want to schedule a coaching session with me about. If you're not sure, we can work on some of the things that you might be able to do to get clarity so you can make a good choice. Again, my website is TheBigGameHunter.us. Go there. There's a lot in the blog to help you go exploring their courses, books, and guides. Again, TheBigGameHunter.us. I also want to mention that you should connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash the big game hunter. Have a terrific day and be great.